O God, all wise and holy. Thank you for all the opportunities you give to my students to discover their hidden talents and gifts. God of love and life, as we celebrate the International Day of the Girl Child on the 11th of October, we pray for a change in the mindset of the people to accept and respect your image in every person without bias. May everyone be valued equally as precious and loved. O oh God, we also pray for all the victims of abuse, discrimination and violence who feel unloved and rejected. Heal their wounds and strengthen them to attain their potential to live a fuller life. This we ask in your precious name. Amen. Imagine a world where all the children would be well nourished, happy, cheered for and comforted. Would be lovely, isn't it? Hello everyone. I take great pride in introducing Mrs. Edwina Pereira, who has focused on child safety and well-being, gender equality and HIV for over three decades. Mrs. Pereira's wholeheartedness and commitment towards the well-being of children drove her to work for, ch for children health protection and development in several villages across India and its neighboring countries. Mrs. Edwina Pereira has now retired as the Executive Director of Child First Foundation, a non-profit organization based in Bangalore. She now enjoys being a loving grandmother. She truly is an empowered woman and only empowered women can empower other women. Hi students of Sacred Arts Girls High School. Congratulations! Y'all are celebrating the International Day of the Girl Child. We girls have always been told from the time we were small that we need to look good, we need to, uh, we need to keep quiet, we need to uh, listen to others, uh, good girls just listen, good girls do not climb trees, good girls do not scream or laugh loud. Hmm? We are never told what we can do apart from girls must cook and girls must clean the house and keep everything spick and span. Today, with International Day of the Girl Child, I'd like to tell you all a story of a donkey. Now, this donkey was a faithful worker to the farmer. And one day when the donkey was singing and going around, the donkey fell into a well. And when the donkey fell into the well, the donkey decided, I'm not going to be a good girl and keep quiet. But I am going to be screaming and so the donkey started screaming and with the screaming the farmer as well as the others came around and they looked and saw the donkey inside the well. But then the donkey was old so the farmer told his friends come there's this mud let's just take this mud and cover the donkey up. 
bury the donkey so that uh, anyway the donkey can die. So the farmer and his friends started taking the mud and they started putting it into the well. Now this poor donkey kept thinking, I worked so hard for the farmer and look at this ungrateful farmer. He's not saving me, but he's killing me. Till the donkey realized, it's no point if I have problems that I don't do anything and expect others to do things to save me. So the donkey decided, let them keep throwing the mud in. I cannot stop that. But let me see what I can do. Now the farmer and his friends kept throwing the mud and the donkey started singing now. So they looked at the well after a while and they found that the donkey, every time mud get, got poured on the donkey, the donkey allowed the mud to come, then shook his body and the mud would go down and the donkey stepped up. So each time mud got put, the mud got became like steps to come up and up and up. And like that, the donkey came up on her own and went away happily, saved herself. Now, when we have challenges, there are two ways we can look at it. We can also think like the donkey of keeping quiet. That's not going to help. The farmer and his friends will keep throwing and your problems will only grow. Instead, like the donkey, can we voice it out? When we have a challenge, if we voice it out, when we have uh, any kind of a problem, if we let someone know, it becomes easier for us to ourselves think of a situation or a solution to that particular challenge. Now, another point that I'd like to bring about with the donkey story is don't look at others to solve your problems. Look within yourself. Find those challenges. I remember when I was in school, I was all the time in front of the principal's, uh, you know, office, especially before the exams, because my parents couldn't pay my fees. We were six children and my parents found it difficult to pay the fees. And so when it came to, after the 10th standard, uh, I wanted to go to college. My parents would not have money for me. There were five others to take care of schooling at least. And then I wanted to do my graduation and post-graduation. Of course, I could not depend on my parents at that time. There were so many others in my family that needed to uh, come up. And to make things worse, in 10th standard, I failed in Hindi. In my ICSE, I got high marks but failed in Hindi. So colleges would not take me. So it was only Bishop Cotton's uh, school that had the 11th and 12th ISC signs. And I got in there. But I had to voice out my challenge. I had to, I, I mean, there were two ways I could deal with it. I could either think, uh, oh, how can I share that we are so poor, we cannot afford. No, it's it'll bring shame to my family. Or I could think, let me share that I can't and ask for a scholarship. So I decided to ask for the scholarship right from 11th and 12th for my graduation and post-graduation. And that's what made me, uh, you know, complete my studies with a distinction and got me this wonderful job that took me to different places to do training in. So when we have challenges, voice it out. Don't keep it hidden. Voice it out. My principles understood. And when I went into college, a central government scholarship was available. Look out for it because it's your future that is at stake. So when you find that voice to be able to share not just your challenges, but also your successes, 
then your future is in your hands so all the best girls voice out and all the best for your future thank you